Welcome back to Favorite Tip Friday. This is a series where I reach out to contributors from all over the author community and get their top tips on the subject of the week. And this week, we're focusing on best business advice. Now, some people are self-publishing books just for the fun of it. They have a vision for a book, whether it's a written book or a journal, and they just want to get that book published and out into the world. They don't care about making any sales. They just want to say that they've published a book. And if that's you, well, then that's great. More power to you. But if you're interested in making any kind of sales for your book, whether you're looking to make a few extra dollars to pay for your weekly Starbucks, or you're looking to fire your boss and make self-publishing books your full-time job, then you need to look at this as a business. So let's see what advice our contributors have to offer. Let's get to the contributors. Hi, Keith. Thanks for having me back on the channel to share some more tips. So my best business advice to you as an author is that you need to have an action list for this week. Ideally, you've already done some reflection on your goals for the year, the month, the quarter, whatever it is, but you need to know what needs to happen this week. I started doing this back in 2019 and it completely transformed my business. I was able to get so much more done once I knew what I needed to get done right now. Focusing on the big picture items just got too overwhelming and it felt like nothing was getting done. By looking at the short term and getting some quick wins, I was able to do a lot more. I hope that helps with your business too. My best business advice would be to be flexible. And this goes from self-publishing to any walk of business, be flexible. And the next thing is, is also have empathy because sometimes when things don't work out for you, you're the very first thing you're going to think about is to externally lash out at people in some capacity because things aren't going your way. So when I say be flexible, but also have empathy, this means that Every now and then, some things aren't going to work for you the way it does. So you've got to bend just a little bit, figure out why it didn't go in your direction, course correct appropriately, or make compromises where necessary without sacrificing your integrity. And then you're going to be good to go. So with that being said, flexibility, big, big deal. Now, um, you're probably saying, does this mean I need to sacrifice my message as an author? No, not by any stretch. Um, but there are going to be some walks of life that you don't want to have some particular thing be the hill that you die on, uh, the cross that you get hung on. You want to make sure that you're flexible, that you can bend just a little bit and continue on as being a great author that you are. My best business advice, especially with self-publishing, is... If you don't know how to do something, either learn it or find someone who can do it for you. Now, for me, there's a lot of things I can do. There are some things I can't do. Creating a nonfiction cover, okay, I can do that. But a fiction cover, I can't do that. I mean, I could, but it would look like an indie author did it. And it's not what I want. I want them to look professional. Another thing is ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask. Joining a Facebook group is great. Usually you can search for the answer that you're looking for. And if the answer is not there, go ahead and ask. Somebody might have that answer you are looking for. So don't be afraid and always research. The best business advice I can give you is to decide whether this is going to be a lemonade stand or a business. When you were a kid and you were creating a lemonade stand, you know, your, your parents paid for the, the products probably. And, uh, you, you know, you'd make the lemonade, you'd sell it for a quarter or 50 cents or whatever you sold it for. And then as soon as the day was over or your lemonade was gone for the day, then you took all that money and you went and you spent it on something. That's a lemonade stand. With a business, you need to take some of that money that comes in and put it back into your business. And to me, that's really the biggest difference between being successful self-publishing books and just doing it as a hobby. And again, if you want to do it as a hobby, more power to you. But if you're looking to make a full-time job out of this or even a part-time job out of it. You need to treat it like a business and not like a lemonade stand. You need to put some of that money back in there. 
Now, don't forget, you are an employee, which means you can allow yourself to have X amount of dollars as your salary or your hourly wage or whatever you want to figure it out as. But you need to take all of the money that comes in as a profit and treat it as a business and decide, okay, X amount goes for taxes, X amount goes for my salary, X amount goes back into the business for advertising or book covers or whatever the rest of it's going to be. But again, majority of it needs to go back into your business to help pay for other things in the future for your other books. So again, the best business advice I can give you is decide whether this is going to be a lemonade stand or a business. One of the most important things is having a good workflow and a system in place, or you will be all over the place. <laughs> it's important with anything that you're doing in life, right? It's just holding yourself accountable. Um, and then having a system in place to help whatever you're doing, okay? It doesn't matter if you're building a brand, if you're building a, uh, uh, a novel, uh, if you're building a low content book, if you're, if you're making a coloring book, if you're making a recipe book, or whatever it is. Having a system in place for yourself or if you're trying to even grow, right? If you're trying to get to the next level, it's important and crucial that you have a system in place or you'll be doing way too much, okay? Uh, and I've learned that over the years as, I have, as I've grown personally is having a system in place makes it so much easier. And then when you want to relax and take certain days off, you can because you're not grinding, you know, Monday through Sunday or whatever to seven days a week, six days a week. You know what I mean? You can grind really hard for three days, maybe 12 hours in the day and then take a few days off, you know, and go do whatever you want to do. Um, it's all about having systems in place because this will help you not only grow faster, but make things so much easier to it as you start to grow. Okay, this is why you create, this is why you outsource, this is why you, you hire, you know, hire people to help you do things, okay? And, and don't think about it as, oh, that's gonna cost a lot of money, because it's not, okay, it's not that expensive to do. You can get like a, a new person in your team, like in the Philippines, you know, you can pay them five, six dollars an hour, right? And if they do, you know, let's say 20 hours a week, right? And, and you're paying them 100 to 80 to 150 dollars a week to help you. So be it. Like you know, if I have somebody that I recently hired on my team, she is really freaking good, right? And I have to call her and get on a call with her and talk to her. But she is amazing, and I love her. She makes me happy, right? So I want her to stay on the team, and I want to give her more work, and I want her to understand that. She's not going nowhere because it's so important when it comes to this, having a system in place is everything. Uh, I would say be prepared for the long haul. I think, you know, there's no such thing as an overnight success, no matter what it looks like from the outside. And personally, I've just found that things usually take quite a bit longer than I initially think they're going to. And I think just as a general rule, achievements, goals, um, they take a considerable amount of consistent, sustained effort, usually over a considerable period of time. And I think if you're not prepared for that, um, it can get really easy to quit. You've got to be prepared for these periods of demotivation, um, failures to happen, the learning, the growth, all of it. It's a process. It's always a process, usually a long process, and you've got to account for all those, those little periods in between of the demotivation, the failure, the growth, the learning, all of that stuff. It happens over time. So for me, I would say that's really important because when you know that you're in it for the, whole, the long haul, when you can kind of settle in, get comfortable, and just know that you're going to get where you want to go eventually, it doesn't have to be today, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but if you just keep making consistent effort, you will get there eventually, it's much easier to actually get there. When you're not prepared for that, I think it's a lot easier to quit. So that's my advice, is be prepared for the long haul. Settle in, get comfortable, and you will get there eventually. I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to all the contributors this week. Make sure that you check out their channels with the links down in the description below. And if this is the first Favorite Tip Friday you've ever seen, then make sure you check out the whole series right here and see all the different contributors we've gotten from all over the author community and all the different tips that we've had covered over the few weeks. Now, if you're not interested in Favorite Tip Friday videos, then make sure that you check out this video right here that YouTube says is perfect for you. I'll catch you in one of those videos, and remember to write right.